Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at Pascal and Pascal's triangle. And you can see Pascal's triangle is here on my right. There are a lot of fascinating patterns involved in Pascal's triangle. If you've never had the opportunity to study Pascal's triangle, we're going to have that opportunity today. Now, in Pascal's triangle, you can, you can notice some obvious patterns. You can notice that the outside set of numbers are all ones. We can notice that the next diagonal set of numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. But there's a lot more um, really interesting patterns involved in Pascal's triangle. One of them that's not as obvious to see is that, well, think about 11. 11 to the 0 power is 1, just like anything to the 0 power is 1. And 11 to the first power is just 11. Well, notice the second row of numbers are 11, 1 and 1. 11 squared is 121. And if you look at that third row, we have 1, 2, 1. 11 cubed is 1,331. And look what we have in the next row. And that pattern continues. Technically, it even continues into the fifth row, but it becomes a little bit more complicated where some of those double-digit numbers, we have to add them together. It's kind of an interesting pattern. Um, some other interesting patterns is that um, if you look at how to find the next row in the numbers, um, for example, 1 plus 2, if you look over here, 1 plus 2 is uh, 3. And 3 plus 3, if you look at those two numbers, the next row below it would be 6. Or here, 10 plus 5 is 15, and 10 plus 10 is 20. So to find the next row in a set of numbers in Pascal's triangle, you just add the two numbers that are directly above it. Uh, we also have uh, what's called the, what I like to call the hockey stick uh, set of numbers. What does that mean? Well, if I look at those numbers, for example, 1 plus 3 plus 6 is 10. Or if we look at these set of numbers, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is also 10. So the sum of a set of numbers and the kind of end of that hockey stick gives you that sum of those numbers. So 1 plus 3 plus 6 plus 10 is 20, and so on. So that's kind of an interesting pattern that you can see as well. Another interesting pattern is dealing with uh, base 2. If you were to add up each row, for example, the sum for that first row, that sum for that first row would just be 1. Well, 2 to the 0 power is 1. The sum for that second row, 1 plus 1, is 2. 2 to the first power is 2. The sum for that sec uh, third row, 1 plus 2 plus 1, is 4. Well, 2 squared is 4. And the next row, 1 plus 3 plus 3 plus 1, is 8. 2 cubed is 8. And so the sum of each row can be found by taking 2 to the nth power, whatever, and n refers to what row number. By the way, speaking of row numbers, if you notice, the first row is row 0. The second row technically would be called row 1. The next row would be row 2, and so on. So that's also important to recognize. Well, what has this to do with what we are talking about in the previous video with combinations? Well, we're going to look at a box that's going to describe how combinations apply to Pascal's triangle. So let's look at that now. Well, what this box down here is showing is the definition of Pascal's triangle can be found by using combinations where n refers to the row number and r refers to the term in the sequence for that row. Now the thing to remember is that just like the rows start with row 0, the terms in the sequence start with the first number in the sequence is term 0. So for example, Pascal's triangle can be come up with by finding 0 choose 0. 0 choose 0 is 1. Remember we talked about that in the previous video that anytime the n and the r are the same that your result is always going to be 1. So 0 choose 0 is going to be 1. 1 choose 0 is also 1 and 1 choose 1 is 1 as well. So these first three give us the top of our triangle. Well 2 choose 0 that's 1. 2 choose 1, if you do that on your calculator, that's 2. 2 choose 2 is going to be 1 again. And 3 choose 0, you can guess, is going to be 1. 3 choose 1 is going to be 3. 3 choose 2 is also 3. 
and 3 choose 3 is 1. So you can see how we can use combinations to come up with the different uh, parts, the different items in Pascal's triangle. So for example, if you're asked to find the first four terms in row 9 of Pascal's triangle, to find that first term, what we would do is we would take and say, well, 9 choose 0, because it's going to be the ninth row. And the first term in the ninth row would be the zero term. So 9 choose 0, which you can guess would be 1. And now we could find the next term in the sequence by taking 9 choose 1. And 9 choose 1 would end up being 9. Then we would have 9 choose 2, which would end up being 36. And again, you can do those on your calculators. So you want to make sure you watch the previous video to see how to do that on your calculator. And to find the fourth term in the sequence, in row 9, it'd be 9 choose 3, which ends up being 84. So why don't you guys try this next row on your own, find the first four terms in row 20 of Pascal's triangle. So why don't you pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you have the correct answer. Okay, let's see how you did. You should have came up with these numbers. So 22 is 0 would be 1, and 22 is 1 would be 20. So I want to stop there and notice something. Notice how in the previous set, now we know that the first numbers in each row are always going to start with 1. But look at this one. So in the ninth row, the second number was 9. In the 20th row, the second number was 20. So that's another pattern. The second number in each row is going to be whatever row number we're in. And then the other two, you just, again, you could do on your calculator. Now, these are different properties. Some of these we've already talked about. But I've included with these properties what we call the um, combination notation. So with this first one here, the first pattern, or the first property of Pascal's triangle that we're going to re reference here, says the first and last terms in each row are always going to be 1. So we've, that's something we've already talked about. So the way that we would reference that using combination notation is to say that n choose 0 and n choose n would both equal 1. So we, yesterday we talked about the fact that anytime this number and this number are the same, your answer is 1. Well, now we also know that if it doesn't matter what n is, if r is 0, your answer is always going to be 1 as well. The second property is stating that the second and next to last terms are equal to whatever row number you're in. And that's what I was just talking about earlier. So n choose 1, we're referring to the second number in that row, is going to be n. So the ninth number, so 9 choose, or I should say 9 choose 1 would be 9, or 20 choose 1 would be 20. Well, the same thing is true for the second to last number. Well, that's going to be represented like this. For example, if n is 9, 9 minus 1 would be 8. So 9 choose 8 would also end up being the same as n, which would be 9. Each row is symmetric. What does that mean? Well, if we go back up to our uh, Pascal's triangle, we can see five, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, 1. So you can see that each row is symmetric. The way that we can describe that is to say that NCR is the same as N. So n choose r is the same as n choose n minus r. Or 9 choose 3, for example, would have the same value as 9 choose 9 minus 3, which would be 6. So 9 choose 3 and 9 choose 6 would have the same value. Or 9 choose 4 would be the same as 9 choose 5, and so on. We talked about this one as well, the fact that the sum of each row is going to be 2 to the nth power. By the way, in your textbook, if you're using the uh, NCTM FST textbook, there's a typo in here. It actually says 2 times n. So you want to make sure that you note that it's supposed to be 2 to the nth power. The way that we'd write that using summation notation and combination notation would be this. So this is just describing the sum of each number in each row would be 2 to the nth power. And this is just basically saying that each element is the sum of the two elements nearest it in the preceding row, where basically you just add the two numbers above it to find that next term in the particular row, which we looked at earlier. 
And the way that we would describe that, again, using combination notation, would be like this. So let's see how we can use these properties to come up with row 7. So it says, row, use row 6 and properties 1, 3, and 5 to construct row 7 in Pascal's triangle. Well, property 1 was the fact that the first and last numbers are going to be 1s. Property 3 is the fact that uh, each row is going to be symmetric. And property 5 is the fact that we can use the two numbers in the previous row above it to find the next term in that particular row. So for example, using property 1, we know the first number here in row 7 is going to be 1. Using property 5, we can take and add 1 plus 6 to get 7, and 6 plus 15 to get 21. 15 plus 20 would be 35. 20 plus 15 would be 35. And now the fact that I've hit 35 twice tells me that there's not going to be anything larger. So it's going to be symmetric. So I know the next one is going to be the same as the one before the 35, which would be 21. The next one would be 7. And we always end with 1. So it would be row 7. Well, we can also use what we talked about to find the seventh number in row 16. So to find the seventh number in row 16, we would say, well, it's 16 shoes. Now we've got to be careful. It's not going to be 16 shoes 7. Let's go back up here to what we had at the beginning. So for example, here we had 3 choose 1. That's actually the second number in that row was 3 choose 1. The third number in this row is, three, is found by taking 3 choose 2. So you always start with whatever row number. So if we're trying to find the third row, we start with that. But as far as the term in that row, we have to take 1 minus that particular term number. So if I want to find the third term, it would be 3 minus 1 would be 2. So for example, now going back to what we're trying to find, if I want to find the seventh number in row 16, 1 minus that would be 6. So I would take 16, choose 6, do that on my calculator, and we would get 8,008. So why don't you guys try to find the eighth number in row 20? So why don't you guys do that on your own? So pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you have the correct answer. OK, let's see how you did. You should have taken 20 to the, or 20 choose 7. So you should find the eighth number and be 20 choose 7, which gives you 77,520. Well, that's it. That is how we can use Pascal's triangle to, and combinations together to find uh, some of those different values. So with that, good luck now as you work on your assignment.